The sun had set twice on the city of Rome, and still they ran. 1,500 meters was all that remained on the second day of the 1960 Olympic decathlon. But for C.K. Young and for Rafer Johnson, it would be the toughest and most important journey of their lives. They grew up thousands of miles and a world apart. Yang Chuan Kuang, known as CK, became a teenage phenom in post-war Formosa, later known as Taiwan. He came to America to pursue something his country had never achieved, but wanted desperately, an Olympic medal. Boy, I tell you, it's like the whole country was on my shoulder. It was a lot of pressure, yes, a lot of pressure. Rafer Johnson also knew pressure. He grew up in Texas and California during hard times that included living with his family for a year in a railway boxcar. Yet he excelled in all sports, including football, and eventually became one of UCLA's premier athletes. He entered the 1956 games the decathlon favorite and world record holder, but injuries hampered his performance, leaving him second to Milt Campbell. But while Rafer and CK were destined to meet in Rome as adversaries, something more interesting had happened first in Los Angeles. While training together under UCLA head coach Ducky Drake, these two young athletes became best friends. We became very, very good friends, but uh, all of us knew. Uh, Ducky knew, I knew, CK knew that eventually we'd be head to head. The first day's competition lasted far into the night. When it was over, CK had beaten Rafer in four of the first five events. Yet Rafer was the leader thanks to a remarkable performance in the shot put. On the second day, the lead swung dramatically from Rafer to CK and back to Rafer again as each superb athlete pushed the other to perform better and better and better. During the competition, Rafer and I uh, tried to help each other in the beginning. The tighter it got, the less we talked with each other. And then we start to uh, and not to help each other, especially the second day. Never had so little separated the leaders going into the final event. If Johnson could stay within 10 seconds of the faster Yang and the 1500 meters, he'd win. But it would take the race of his life. I was wondering where Rafael was, and I looked behind. He was right behind me. He was green at me. Suddenly, the finish line was before him, and C.K. knew he couldn't shake his American friend. Rafer Johnson, finishing less than two seconds behind Young, would be the 1960 Olympic decathlon champion. He held me up. I mean, I had, I had given it everything I could possibly give it. Uh, he'd done the same. I knew he was disappointed, and, and there was a little bit of me disappointed for him as well. Today, C.K. is director of Taiwan's sports training programs, and while his memories of 1960 are sharp, his body feels the years gone by. Many people ask me if, I, if I'm still working out, and I said, you must be kidding, you know. I tell them if, I, if I'm a race car, I will be in a junkyard. Rafer Johnson's Olympic moment has stretched into a lifetime. He's appeared in movies, and he's been active in political campaigns. He was with his friend Robert Kennedy the night of RFK's assassination in 1968. In 1984, he climbed the stairs of LA's Coliseum to light the Olympic torch. But today, Rafer is best known for his work in creating a different kind of champion. He's the director of the California Special Olympics. In Special Olympics, mentally retarded citizens, on a daily basis, point to and say, I was as good as I could be. And that's the same feeling I had when I competed in 1956 and 60. If you prepare well, and you give it all you can give it, and you can say that you were as good as you could be, then again, who can ask more than that? On that night in Rome, the answer was no one.